Welcome to our advanced Power BI tutorial. Power BI is designed to display data only. However, in this tutorial, we will show you how to enter data into your SQL Server database from the same Power BI dashboard that you are using to display the same data. We will discuss advanced real-time connectivity through change detection and auto-refresh. We will use ASPX and .NET Server. However, you can use PHP or other similar technologies as well. We will also perform data modeling and use Power Query and M language. We will use advanced SQL queries to build tables and views in our SQL Server database. So let's go and design our advanced Power BI project. We have SQL Server datasets on our website, which you can view and access through this URL. These are the tables that we have created for various tutorials, which you can also use for practice. Today, we will create some more tables here for today's tutorial. So, first of all, we will select this database. We will execute the use command to select this database in our SQL Server. Then, we will create a buyers table, which will contain the list of buyers. We will use Indigino, the name of our company, as prefix of our tables. Create a column named Buyer ID, where we will save the buyer unique ID. A tiny integer data type is enough for a two-digit ID. In the next column, we will save buyer name, which could contain any character. Maximum length of characters for this column is 32. Finally, create a column to store buyer's location, with the same data type and length as buyer's name. Now, execute the query to create this table. Our table has been created. We can verify this table from its name by visiting our website, where all tables in this database are listed. We must refresh this web page to update the list of tables. And here is the table we just created, along with all its columns. Now, let's create a table for Indigino products. Create a column to store product names. Create another column to store product code, which is three digits long, and a small int is enough to store this code. Create a column to store product cost, with money as data type. Finally, create a column to store the product price, again with money as data type. Execute the query, to create the table. The table has been successfully created. It should be available in this list as well. We can refresh this page to update the list of tables. And here is our table, along with all its columns. We can also add or modify columns or table after it has been created. For example, let's change the maximum length of product name column to 64 instead of 32. We can use the alter table and alter column command to change the column data type. Execute the query to change the data type. The data type of our column has been changed. We can confirm the same from this page as well. Now the maximum length is 64. Finally, we will create another table to record our sales transactions. Let's call this sales table. In the first column, we will record the date and time of transaction. In the second column, we will record the buyer ID. The data type for buyer ID column is tiny integer. We will also need a column to record the delivery status. And another column to record the payment status. Now, Let's execute this query to create our desired table in SQL Server database. 
And here is our newly created table. Now that we have created our tables, let's add some data as well. We will use insert command to insert data into the buyer's table. This is a one-time exercise as we have specific buyers. However, at a later stage, we can also create a mechanism to add and remove buyers. Similarly, we will also add our list of products along with their product codes, costs, and prices to our products table using the insert command. Now, let's connect our Power BI application to our SQL Server database. Copy SQL Server address from our website and paste it in the server field. Then, enter the SQL Server database name, which you find on the same web page, into the database field. Select Direct Query as Data Connectivity Mode. Leave the Advanced Options and press OK button. Go to Database section and enter username and password provided on our website. You can copy and paste these credentials into the username and password field. After entering the username and password, click on the connect button to proceed further. From the navigator window, select only the Indigino tables, which are buyers, products, and sales. After selecting all three tables, click on the load button to connect your Power BI application to these SQL Server tables. Once connected, these tables will be available in your data pane along with all their fields. As you can see here, now we will create a view to enter transactions into our database directly from our Power BI dashboard. In this view, we will combine data from both buyers and products table. B is for buyers and P is for products, and we will select all their columns in this view. In addition, we will also create a new column where we will create a URL, which will be used for data entry. We have not created this page yet. Whenever this URL is opened, a sales transaction will be recorded in the SQL Server database. The type sales query string will identify the transaction as sales transaction. We will use the query string to supply the buyer ID and the product ID to this URL. The BID query string will provide the buyer ID, which will be taken from the buyer's table. The PC query string will provide the product code, which will be taken from the products table. We will call this column Initiate Sales. Now we will select the buyer's table into variable B, which we have already used above, and the products table into the variable P, which also was used above in the select command. Cross join is used to repeat each product before all buyers to create all possible data entry combinations. We will execute this query. To create a view in our SQL Server database. Our view has been created, we can use the SELECT command to view the data in our view. The benefit of creating a view is that every time we add or remove a product or buyer, the input combination will automatically be updated. And here is our data, all the possible combinations in case of a sale. Whenever a sale is made to a buyer, we will click on the, the URL by selecting the product we sold, and the sales transaction will be recorded in the database. We can also confirm this view from our website. We just need to refresh this page to update the list of tables and views. And here is the view, with all its columns from buyer table and the product table, including the one we created for URL. To add this view to our Power BI application, we need to go to the query editor. We don't have to repeat all the get data steps that we performed before to add other three tables. 
we can directly add the view using the M language. Just create a duplicate from any of the existing tables and rename it to inputs. Leave the source command unchanged, which connects to the SQL Server database. Go to the navigation step. Change the table name and enter the name of the view you want to add to the Power BI data source. Ignore the warning and just refresh the preview using Refresh Preview button. And here we have our view, which contains all the possible sales transactions, containing all the buyers and products, and a URL before each combination. Click on the Close and Apply button to add this view to the data pane of our Power BI report. And here is our view in the data pane, along with all fields. Finally, we can create a data entry form to enter our sales transactions into our SQL Server database. First, add a text box visual at the top of the dashboard and enter a title for your dashboard. Then, add a table visual to your dashboard and add the product name, price, and initiate sales fields to the table visual. We currently have only two combinations, buyer and product, and still the list is long. We can add buyer name to our dashboard and change the visual to a slicer. Now, when we will select a specific buyer, the list will shrink and show only possible sales transactions to that specific buyer, from which we can initiate one. Select all visuals and add visual borders to all of them. Also add some rounded corners for better appearance. Now we can easily select a buyer and display the products accordingly. To enter a sales transaction, we can simply click on the URL given in the initiate sales column. To make it work, go to the cell elements in the format tab and turn on the web URL option. Now when you will click this URL, it will initiate a sales transaction. The problem is, however, that there is currently no page on our server to perform such operation. But we can create one, so let's do that. Before moving further, let's create an ID column inside the sales table using the alter table command. ID column can help us in many ways in future. Let's delete any existing records from this table using the delete command. Now we are all set to create a web page on our server to record the sales transactions in this sales table directly from our Power BI dashboard. You can do this on your local computer as well. We are using ASPX and Visual Basic.net. Same can be done using PHP or any other language. We will use Visual Studio.net to create a web page in the app's directory, just as we created our URL. Click OK to create a web form page. After the page has been created, we can add some minor details such as page name and some text to the page body. Let's add a welcome message to the page body. Now, let's see what happens when we click on a URL in our dashboard. Now we don't end up with an error. Instead, we see the page we just created. Now, we will add some logic to this page to record the sales transaction through the URL into our SQL Server database. We will add the logic inside the page load event. We can create a dedicated function to record our sales transaction and call that function from the load event. Now, Let's create this record sales transaction function, which we are calling here. First, we will check if the query string type has the value sales, which means that the sales transaction must be recorded, otherwise nothing will happen. We have this file, which handles all SQL queries targeted at the database named datasets, where our sales table resides. We will simply call this function and provide the insert command and our SQL query will be executed. Here, we will enter our insert command, 
to insert data into sales table. The first column requires date and time, which we can get through getDate function. The second column requires the buyer ID, which we can get from the query string from URL. We can create a variable to store the value from URL query string. Then we can provide that value to the insert command here. Similarly, we can get the product code from the PC query string in the URL and store it in a variable. Then we can provide the value of that variable to the insert command. We will store in process, for delivery status, and unpaid, for payment status, which we will change later when product has been delivered, and the payment has been received. The final column is the id column, which was originally a small integer, and we were planning to provide our own id, but a better way is to use built-in identity. Go to SQL Server Management Studio and delete the existing ID column, using the drop command. Now, create a new ID column, with integer data type, using identity. This will create an auto increment identity number, which we will not have to provide in our insert command. Now, since we do not have to provide a value for our last column, our insert command is now complete. Let's save our web page and try to initiate sale from our Power BI dashboard. Let's confirm that there is no data in our sales table. We can use select command to get data from SQL Server table. Now let's click on any URL to record a sales on our SQL Server sales table. Let's execute the select command. And here it is, our sales that we just initiated from the Power BI dashboard. Let's initiate some more sales to other buyers as well. And we can confirm each sales from our SQL Server Management Studio using the select command. We can place our web browser in a corner and keep posting sales transactions without it bothering us. Let's initiate some more sales transactions and then we will go back to our SQL Server Management Studio to confirm those transactions. And here we have all those transactions that we entered using our Power BI dashboard. Now we can create a dashboard, but to do that, we will combine sales, buyer, and product table into a view, using left join based on sales table. We will use this SQL query to combine the sales table, buyers table, and the product table by selecting everything from sales table and selecting relevant data from buyers table using left join based on buyer id and then relevant products using product id executing this query will create a new view which will contain sales information with all information of buyers and products involved as well we can use the select command to display the view in sql server management studio and here is the result, which contains all information we need to create our dashboard. Some of the columns are useless, such as repetitive buyer ID column and the product code column. However, this was done to keep the query simple for you guys. Now we must bring that view to our data pane, and for that we will go to the query editor. Here, we will duplicate and rename one of the existing tables. Then we will remove the navigation step and go to the source step. 
and click on the table link against the table or view we want to add. This will add the table in the navigation step. To add this table to the data pane, we must click on the close and apply button. After some time on the load screen, the Power BI application would add this new table to the data pane, along with all its fields, which we can use to create our dashboards. Here is the table and its fields in the data pane. Now, let's use these fields to create a sales report on a new page with an appropriate title. First, add a line chart to your dashboard and place it at the top left corner. Add sales date and product price from sales report table. Rename the price field to sales. Also add the product cost field. Now, add a map visual to your dashboard at the top right corner. Add the buyer location field as location. And product price as bubble size, renamed as sales. Add a pie chart visual to the bottom left corner of the page. Add buyer name field to legend and product price field to values as sales. Duplicate this pie chart visual and replace the buyer name field with the product name field. Duplicate the visual again and replace the product name field with the delivery status field. Duplicate the visual once more and replace the delivery status field with the payment status field. Add the id field to the dashboard and change it to count. Rename it to total sales as well. Place it at the top right corner. This will tell us how many sales have been made so far. Change the visual to a multi-row card and set the text to an appropriate size. Select all visuals and turn on their visual borders and set the rounded corners appropriately as well. Now, we can test our dashboard. Let's initiate a sales transaction. Sales has been made but we need to click on the refresh button to update the dashboard. And as you can see, the dashboard now reflects the sales we just initiated. We can turn on the page refresh to automatically update the data. Change detection is well suited for this kind of system. We can check for changes in one of the fields every few seconds and then update the dashboard if the value we are tracking has been changed. The ID field in the sales report table is the best candidate for change tracking. Now, let's make another sales transaction and see if the dashboard shows that transaction automatically or not. We currently have 9 sales transactions as you can see on the dashboard. Let's click on one of the links and see if the transaction appears in the dashboard. And here you go, as you can see, the dashboard now shows 10 transactions, and all other visuals have also been updated. Let's make another transaction. Our data input and output mechanism is working wonderfully. We are using same file as input and output as well. The visuals are working fine as well. The next step would be to create a mechanism to update delivery status and the payment status as well. To do that, we need to create another view. To create a view, we will use SQL Query. We will select our database and the create a view inside that database. We will select all columns from the sales table. Then we will create a URL just like we created one previously to record the sales transaction. Except this time, the type is DS which indicates delivery status. And the other query string is ID from sales table. When we will click on this link, the delivery status of sales transaction against the given ID will change. We will call this column, update delivery status. We will create another URL to update the payment status. The type query string will be PS, which indicates payment status. And the other query string will be ID from sales table. 
we will call it update payment status. When we will click on this link, the payment status against sales transaction with given ID with change. We will select the sales table in the variable S, which we have used already. Now, we can execute this query to create the view we want to create. Make sure you have selected nothing or the entire query. Our view has been created, which we can display using the select command. And here is the resulting view, which contains all columns from the sales table, plus the two URL columns to change delivery status and the payment status. Now we can bring this table into our Power BI application using the query editor or the M language. As usual, we will duplicate an existing table and rename that table to update status. Now we will delete the navigation step and click on refresh button to update the list of tables. When we see the table we want to add, we will simply click on the table link in the data column. This will again create the navigation link and add the table we wanted to add. Now we need to click on the close and apply button to add this table to the data pane. And here is the table we just added along with all its fields which we can use to create a screen to update a delivery and payment status. Before creating the update status screen, we need to create a data model. In the model view, we need to connect the products table and the buyers table to the update status table using product code and the buyer ID as relationships. Connect the products table to the update status table using the product code as relationship. Now, connect the buyer's table to the update status table using the buyer's ID as relationship. We will use this data model to create a screen to update the delivery status and the payment status. Now, let's create our update status screen using this data model. Add a table visual to your dashboard. Add all columns from the update status table and arrange them nicely in the table visual. Make sure none of the fields are aggregated. Now, we can use our data model to filter the values in this table view using buyer name and product name. We can add buyer name from buyers table as slicer in the dashboard to filter data as table view based on buyers. We can also add another slicer here using the product name from products table to filter data in the table visual based on product name. Now, select all visuals and add visual borders and rounded corners as per your taste. Now test the slicers. If the data model is working, the data as table visual will change based on values selected in the slicers. The data model and visuals are working perfectly. Now let's make the links clickable. In the cell elements, turn on web URL setting for both URL columns. And that's it, now these links are working. However, we have to program our web page to accept these commands. Also, we need to turn on page refresh option on this page as well, so that when the link is clicked, the status change is also reflected on this dashboard. We can use auto page refresh for this screen. Now, when we will click on a link, the data in the server will be updated and the updated status will also display on this page as well. Now, let's program our page to accept these URL commands and update status in the SQL Server database. Let's move the if condition to the form load event to execute function based on type query string.
If the type is sales, the record sales transaction function will execute. And if the type is DS, the update delivery status function will execute. Let's create the required update delivery status function. We are using subroutine instead of a function because we do not require any output. Now we need to program this function to change the delivery status. First, we will use a data table to extract the row pertaining to given ID in the sales table. We will use the select command to select all rows pertaining to the given ID, and there is only one row since ID is unique. We will use the where condition to get data based on given ID. Now, let's create this variable ID and store the value of query string ID in it. Now, we will extract only the value of delivery status from the entire row. There is only one row, its index is zero, and the column name is sales delivery status. We can confirm the column name from data pane. There should not be a mistake in column name. Now that we have existing delivery status, we can use the if command to change the status to other than that of existing status. If the existing status is in process, we will change it to complete, and if the existing status is complete, we will change it to in process. This way, whenever we need to change the delivery status, we will just click on the URL. All SQL commands will use ID as where condition to change the status of transaction with given ID only. This will change the status to complete if the status is already in process. We will copy and use the same code to change the status from complete to in process. And that's it, our page is now programmed to update the delivery status from URL. Let's go to our dashboard and see if our system is working or not. We can just click on a URL and see if the status is updating or not. Great, as you can see, the status against the transaction is changed to complete. Let's go to the sales report and see if data is showing against status complete as well. And here you are, now data against status complete is also visible in the delivery status pie chart. We can also change this status back to in process by clicking on the same URL. Let's change some more delivery status values. The system is working perfectly, now we can create similar mechanism for payment status as well. Let's add some code to our web page to change the payment status as per URL. The update payment status will be called when type is PS. Let's create a subroutine named update payment status. We will copy code from update delivery status because the code will almost be the same. Only the column name will change from delivery status to payment status. And status will change from in process to unpaid and complete to paid. We will make sure that the column name is updated in the entire code. We will also change DS which stands for delivery status to PS meaning payment status. Our web page is now ready. Now we can go back to our Power BI dashboard and test our system. As you can see, all data is currently represented by unpaid against payment status. We can now click on the URL to change the payment status from unpaid to paid and back as we like. And as you can see, when we click on the URL, the status is changing from unpaid to paid. Now we can go to the sales report and see the data against payment status. It now shows both paid and unpaid, which means our mechanism is working flawlessly. And with this, we end our today's tutorial. We hope you liked this tutorial, 
and it gave you a lot of new ideas. Feel free to give your feedback, or ask anything in the comments below.